Let's talk, though, to Councillor Colin Smith, who's the leader uh, of Bromley Council. Uh, Bromley, of course, one of the areas which has now had to impose ULES uh, on its own citizens, if you like, the good people of Bromley, uh, very much against Colin's will, I believe. Colin, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, yes, very much against our will. Doesn't really come close, but... We are where we are and the battle goes on, clearly. The battle does go on. I mean, I'm detecting, though, an awful lot of resistance and more resistance, I think, than there's ever been to any kind of traffic-imposed uh, rule which has been brought in, you know, because, you know, we've had the congestion child zone, we've had the first ULEZ zone, but the second one is really, really unpopular. And I've spoken to an awful lot of people in the last week or so um, who have said a variety of things. All of them are unhappy about it, but some of them are going to refuse to pay any fines that are issued. There are legal challenges already being one by people who say if there's no sign that actually says there is a ULES charging zone and you can be fined, then the fine becomes, um, you know, in, in, impossible to um, police, if you like. Yeah, Mike, uh, I have never, 21 years I've been a councillor now, um, never ever in that time have I come across something that has so energised people. It, it's such a strong feeling out there on the streets completely goes across all political uh, parties. People really, really hate what has been thrust down their throats here. And they're clearly going to try and resist it to the, to the very bitter end. And to that end, clearly, we're now talking to parliamentarians, colleagues in the House of Lords. Mm. What we absolutely must get now is a change to the law to prevent anything like this happening again in the future and more to the point, try and get a way of unpicking this uh, to reverse the decision that we've seen made, unfortunately, this morning. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, as far as the signage goes, that seems to be a big thing that people are talking about. I know that there were some councils and some areas where they were refusing to put signs up to suggest that the ULO zone was in force. What's the situation in Bromley? Have you got signs up? Yeah, uh, Mike, against our will, we would very, very much like to have emulated what colleagues in the home counties have done and has effectively refused to cooperate. But unfortunately, this wretched GLA Act of 1999 empowers TfL to put these signs up on the borough roads, whether we like it or not. Um, and that is disappointing, to put it mildly. Yes, absolutely right. But, I mean, apparently, legally speaking, unless the sign, and I've seen some of the signs which just say, you know, ULES zone, uh, they don't say that there's a fine if uh, you are not uh, somehow compliant with the ULES zone rules. If there is no sign that says there's there's no fine applicable, or there is a sign, a, a sign applicable, a fine applicable, then apparently the fines are not actionable. Yeah, I saw the fellow this morning in the news, Mike, actually. Um, £11,000 worth of yeah. fines or so he had accrued. Well done him. Good luck to him. I know there'll be an awful lot of people looking at the underlying legislation there because, frankly, if he's gotten away with it, and well done him again, um, there will be a lot of people that have paid the fines. I would imagine feeling pretty aggrieved and looking for refunds. Mm. Yes, I think so. So as far as your kind of um, knowledge goes on this, I mean, you're not really taking any role in this, are you, at Bromley Council? I mean, you don't collect the fines, you don't um, administer the fines, you don't really run the cameras. I mean, presumably there's other people that do all that. Yeah, all TfL, Mike, solely TfL, not the boroughs, um, if only. But unfortunately, it's beyond our control. If we could have stopped them, we would. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as you're concerned, um, are, the, are there a lot of cameras that have been disabled, for example, in Bromley? Are they all working? What's the situation that, with that? Um, I don't go around and check them personally, Mike, um, but there are websites that suggest quite a lot of them have been rendered uh, out of condition. Uh. Uh, clearly not something we condone as elected uh, politicians, but there is an awful lot of anger out there on the streets and it's manifesting itself in ways we perhaps would all prefer it didn't. Well, exactly right. And, I mean, unfortunately, as I've said to people, you know, you, don't, you, you can't obviously um, encourage people to break the law, but if the law uh, in question is something which has sort of just been invented for a particular purpose that nobody wants, then it's a slightly different kettle of fish. That they're, they're sort of protesting against something uh, which hasn't been sort of democratically done. Yeah, I mean, many would argue, Mike, it's civil disobedience, the masses pushing back, but... Again, as an elected politician, you can't condone it. 
but I think you can no, understand but it. There's plenty, of, there's plenty of elected politicians who are willing to condone the vandalism taking place by people like Just Stop Oil and the Extinction Rebellion crowd when they break glass and they break windows and they, you know, uh, do damage to, to, to trucks and cut cables on, on, uh, on HGVs and that kind of thing. And there's always loads of uh, politicians, and I'm not suggesting you should follow suit, but I'm saying, you know, there's a sort of double standard, isn't there? Because there's, there's, there's plenty of people who will stand up and say, oh, it's all right to, uh, uh, to have civil disobedience because it's non-violent protest. Well, so is this, isn't it? Yeah, um, you probably imagine my views on Extinction Rebellion and their tactics, Mike. <laughs> uh, I most emphatically don't condone those either. Um, no. And perhaps that's the difference. No, I think absolutely right. So it's a wait and see kind of brief at the moment, is it? Well, we have um, what's being called a Lord Moylan Amendment, mm. apparently about to be moved through the House of Lords. I know that the Secretary of State, Mark Harper, has written to Keir Starmer, Sir Keir Starmer, basically asking for cross-party support in getting the amendment through, mm. which will effectively stop the road price charging that Mr Khan has uh, hidden up his sleeve if he gets through the next election in May. Uh, but what we've also seen Mr. Ho Mr Harper do is to write to Keir Starmer to invite him to control the mayor and get the mayor to fall into line and cancel, even at this late stage, cancel ULES. Mm. Um, and Mike, why well, I think this is important, there will be an awful lot of MPs and aspiring MPs um, for the general election um, on in the outer London fringes will be looking very, very nervously over their shoulder if this stays in place because it isn't popular and I don't think there will be many Labour candidates in particular who will relish going to a general election if ULES is still a live issue. Yes, I think that's right, and I think that might be just something that, that it will be, be, be a change of, of plan, perhaps, if it doesn't. Because also, if a lot of people just refuse to pay the fines or a lot of people just refuse to comply, you know, it becomes something which is unworkable. In theory, if everybody didn't pay, Mike, I, it, there would be a, a problem in policing it. Ah. Unfortunately, most people... Well, unfortunately, perhaps that's not the right word, most people will pay it because that's the way people are conditioned to obey the law. Um, well, maybe a lot of people will, won't just won't, won't... Maybe a lot of people just won't go to places where they used to go and businesses will suffer because people won't be able to go and shop there or, or won't be able to go and deliver things there. You know, all sorts of, you know, um, knock-on effects could happen, which might make it very, very difficult for people. They not only can, Mike, they are. Mm. Um, even within the council, Bromley Council, we've seen examples of staff that perhaps need to drive their car for work-related purposes, mm. um, £12.50 a day. They're asking, you know, what can we do about it as employers? Yeah. Those discussions clearly need to be had. But the low-paid people in particular are the ones that really, really mm. worry me, Mike. Perhaps shelf stackers at night, teaching assistants, people in low... You know, if you're paying earning 35 grand a year and you're driving your car and you're paying this fine on a daily basis, that's sort of 10% of your gross salary when you tot it all up. Yeah. Um, so what you will see is people who, for argument's sake, are working in, uh, living in Swanley, but working in Albington, they'll have to get a job more locally because they won't be able to afford it. Mm. So businesses will suffer, jobs will suffer, and as people have heard me drone on repeatedly about in the past, what really, really upsets me is really vital care networks for vulnerable, mainly elderly people are going to start falling apart because sons and daughters, friends and relatives aren't going to be able to come to see them to look after them. Yeah. And that, that to me, is the real, real killer in this. It's, it's awful. It really is. Colin, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Colin Smith, uh, the leader of Bromley Council. Not